villages in Japan in harvest time. Before the Second World War, the farming population in Japan accounted for nearly 50% of the total population. But it has decreased to less than 20% today as agricultural mechanization is constantly underway. Nowadays, life in farming villages in Japan is just about the same as that of large cities. A tremendous change compared with what used to be 30 years ago. In 1945, most of the Japanese cities were burnt down and fell into ruins. That was the miserable result of war. Soon, many people were repatriated, bringing back various types of communicable diseases which spread far and wide across the war-torn country. Typhus, cholera, smallpox, malaria, and so on. These children are studying in an open-air classroom because their school buildings were burnt down by an air raid. All the Japanese at that time started their new lives in a miserable condition like this. The country had been under occupation by the Allied forces for seven years from 1945. During that time, epidemics control, such as thoroughgoing DDT spraying and compulsory injection against typhoid fever, had been carried out mostly by the occupation forces. This shows the figures of acute communicable diseases which took place in 1946. In addition to communicable diseases, 10 million people were predicted to die of malnutrition resulting from food shortages. There were many cases of epidemic complications caused by undernutrition. It was a period of ordeal, but there were a few nice stories. For example, the school lunch service program, which started in 1947 with the assistance extended by UNICEF, that sent Japan relief goods such as skimmed milk for underfed children. Under these circumstances, the earliest post-war health activities by the local inhabitants for their community were started in farming villages. Above all, campaigns for vector control spread far and wide across the country led by local bodies organized by the inhabitants. The first health activities to involve the whole community, which began when the villagers rose to protect themselves from acute communicable diseases which had raged in many villages. To eradicate mosquitoes and flies, they had to get rid of the breeding places of these noxious insects from every nook and cranny of the villages. Such problems cannot be solved by a single individual. All people in the village must get together to fight it. They organized an autonomous group to exterminate mosquitoes and flies. In the meantime, everybody realized that they would be able to economize the activities, for instance, by jointly purchasing anti-vermin chemicals. All stagnant pools and rain puddles were covered and fish were raised in ponds where chemicals could not be thrown in. Mosquito and fly control should be accompanied by eradication of lice and ticks. In this job, 
The leading role was played by the local inhabitants themselves, such as members of the Women's Association, youth groups, and school children, but involving few doctors and staff of the health center. Meanwhile, mosquitoes and flies were gone, and cows began to give more milk, and hens laid more eggs even in summer. They were greatly encouraged to find that the result of their work was much better than they had expected. In these campaigns for eradication of mosquitoes and flies, people and villages were the first to achieve successful results. And soon afterwards, people in large cities also began similar movements. This is a slum area in Yokohama where children had no playground because of rubbish dumps. Piles of rubbish and stagnant pools are not only the source of flies and mosquitoes, but also that of diseases. If a single child is infected, everyone in the community may be badly involved. Let's Remove the Rubbish movement was started by an enthusiastically conscientious woman who wanted to give children a playground by getting rid of all the rubbish. Any kind of movement like this would need a person with great enthusiasm, perhaps slightly fanatic in a good sense of the word, like this woman. Time, this movement, initiated by a single person on a modest scale, began to be seriously discussed by other women in the community as their common problem to have to deal with. It eventually developed into a full-scale community movement to eradicate mosquitoes and flies. The town gradually became cleaner with much fewer mosquitoes and flies, and the people in the movement became more interested in their job. The opening for night soil retrieval is another source of flies. Someone thought it a must to put a cover tightly over the opening to prevent fly larvae from creeping out of it. The movement for mosquito and fly control was coupled with a parasite control campaign which greatly helped the community's health movement by the total participation of the inhabitants. At that time, 70% of the Japanese were infected by Ascarides and 30% of the farmers by hookworm. Most of the farmers in Japan at that time were barefooted in summer and night soil was still in wide use as manure in many fields. It naturally follows that hookworms made their way easily through the skin of the farmer's foot into the body itself.
In this movement of parasite control, the major participants were the local inhabitants themselves, led by the village head, practicing doctors and public health nurses. In particular, this movement was characterized by the fact that a large number of parasitologists cooperated with them, featuring the joint efforts of officials, scholars, and people. At the same time, this parasite control movement significantly provided the inhabitants with a useful chance of health education through mass examination and treatment at schools, work sites, and other public places. Fortunately, parasites have been almost eradicated today. At the same time, the parasite control movement helped people in general to see things more scientifically by giving them practical object lessons. The mass examination and treatment in this parasite control movement was most effectively carried out. A similar method was adopted about that time for the tuberculosis prevention, which was implemented on a nationwide scale. The mass health screening system has become the basis of preventive medicine in Japan. This table indicates the infant mortality for 1955 in Japan. The induced abortion cases reported that year accounted for 1,170,000, marking the highest recorded number in history. Most of the women in farming villages still had to work very hard in those days, beyond our imagination today, particularly during and immediately after the war. Under these circumstances, people organized movements throughout the country to prevent infant deaths. Mothers who were still responsible for doing the continuous overwork took the initiative. Meanwhile, public health nurses and midwives in villages were devoutly supporting the movement by helping those mothers through the guidance of their pregnancy care, delivery, and child care. First, public health nurses and midwives tried to find community leaders who would support the mothers to organize voluntary groups and next appealed to the leaders to understand the problems in the communities. And public health nurses and midwives enthusiastically assisted the mothers to solve their common problems by organizing themselves. About that time, a traditional circular notice passed on among the neighbors played an impressive part. The government, on the other hand, implemented measures to extend assistance to promote medical checkups and health guidance for expecting mothers and infants, and issued MCH notebooks to help mothers and their babies. Stated in the MCH notebook are various health and medical data concerning individual mother and baby, such as physical processes during the pregnancy, delivery, infant growth processes, preventive injections and vaccinations together with related information. The family planning movement in Japan was carried out in coordination with the maternal and child health program. It laid great emphasis on the harm of abortion, beginning with ways of its prevention. First, a mother's group to perform practical contraception was organized, and an increasing number of mothers joined the group to practice the contraception. In due time, 
the city, town, and village offices began to join the community group activities by granting some subsidies, although on a modest scale, and dispatching experts for study meetings. And that immensely encouraged the local inhabitants to deal with their job with greater enthusiasm. In this way, various kinds of ideas of family planning by means of people's participation based on the local needs were brought about. For example, what they called a love box, which contained hygienic supplies including contraceptives. It was passed on among themselves from one to another like a traditional circular notice. In this practice, one takes whatever is necessary and leaves the due price in the box, which then is passed on to another neighbor. This will also protect the privacy of each individual. Incidentally, only about 20% of farming families had had public water supplies by 1958. Most families in farming villages used wells for their water needs. So, in areas where water was not easily available, water drawing and carrying used to be one of the hardest jobs for women. Many of them made use of a river for washing if there was one. This, however, helped to spread infectious diseases all over the village if an epidemic such as dysentery occurred. And a farmhouse without many windows, allowing little sunlight, was quite unhealthy. In addition, the smoke rising from the fireplace contributed to the development of trachoma. To improve these old-fashioned living customs in farming villages, a new movement for improvement of living was started around 1952, approximately parallel with the community health activities. It was one of the remarkable movements which promoted the post-war modernization of farming villages in Japan. One of the achievements was the spread of small-scale water supply systems, which not merely relieved the women from the hard work of water carrying, but caused a change in the lifestyle in farming villages to a great extent. The spread of small-scale water supply systems was accompanied by improvement of the kitchen, bathroom, and toilet, which gradually helped to decrease epidemics in local areas. The improvement of living style and standards largely changed the way of thinking and attitude in the life of village people. This village has a public hall built by the village people themselves, where members of the Women's Association, the Youth's Association, and other groups engaged in various activities. For them, the public hall was a fine stage where they fought to break through the hard crust of conventionalism. Here, a cooking class is organized by a women's association. At this meeting, people are studying to improve the farming clothes. Here, mothers would like to find pleasure in reading.
it won't be long before a public shipping site is built. People in the community learn to entertain a sense of togetherness to help each other through these activities. And such a change in the mind of each individual will naturally bring about a congenial climate in which social improvement can be smoothly achieved. Here's a fine result of health activities by people's participation. A health organization established by the mothers in Suita City, Osaka Prefecture. The Suita MCH Association was formed immediately after the war by women who would like to help protect the health of mothers and their babies as a modest service group to provide assistance to the health center activities. This association gradually grew to deal with more extensive work such as joint purchase of daily goods to earn some funds to plan and autonomously operate health programs including the infant and maternal health checkups. They further developed their health activities by extensively coping with various problems in people's lives. <laughs> What makes this association very unique is that it is based on a community group in which every member is a leader instead of being managed by a permanently appointed leader. Depending on the kind of task, any appropriate member takes the leadership for a job assigned, and yet the total operation is carried out smoothly in harmony. In addition to merely helping the health center activities, the members gradually became capable of negotiating with the authorities on their request. Today the inhabitants will receive a health examination organized by the MCH Association. The director of the health center appeared to be surprised at the great number of the community people who have come for a health checkup. Thus, the director and the mothers, the members of the association, promised to cooperate with one another. After 30 years since its establishment, the Suita MCH Association is carrying out ever more helpful activities based at the health center. death rate and the birth rate as they used to be are now strikingly drawing a downward curve. Its result is the remarkable lengthening of the life expectancy at birth of the Japanese. No doubt the impressive progress of medical science in Japan is largely responsible for that but all will agree that the spread of public health activities and the development of maternal and child health have played a no less important role in the whole movement. However, only a few people are aware of the fact that these movements were constantly and patiently carried out by many people's participation when the whole nation was unimaginably poor, suffering from shortages of daily necessities during the early post-war years. It seems many Japanese have already forgotten it in today's affluence. <laughs>